All right, assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing extremely well. Welcome to the last and the very very special lesson uh or lesson number 4. Uh today we will talk about aldehydes and this is finally going to be the end of lesson number 4 and so we will not be discussing nomenclature extensively and explicitly in like separate videos anymore. Um so once again, the rules are in front of you. We have already gone over rule number one and two many, many times. So I won't be go going over it. Um, all right. And uh, apart from that, let me fix this error. So how do we identify a molecule as an aldehyde? Very simply, if you see this group attached to a molecule, the COOH group attached to a molecule, you can say that this is going to be an aldehyde. Now, the reason why I've put a zigzag over here is because you can have anything over here, all right? This can be an alkyl group, it can be a hydrogen, it can be anything. So we are mainly focused on this part. If you have a COOH, which we usually like write like this in our molecular formulas, if you have CHO uh, attached in any molecule, that is an aldehyde period all right and the suffix because we determine our suffix of the molecule depending on the functional groups which are attached to it the suffix is in the case of aldehydes it is anal all right so it is anal so it is ethanol propanol butanol pentanol and i can wrap around uh like till like i don't know uh i can go on so we don't i i hope you like get the idea so and the rule number three is once again that this carbonyl group the c double o is going to be given the highest preference so let's dive into the examples i can't wait to solve them with you and let's just get done with this topic for once and for all okay so in this case i can see that there's only one carbon involved so that brings meth in uh, in, in my head um, not the meth that you're thinking about but the meth which comes from the root word of one carbon uh, all right and uh, because i see this c double o h group this means there's an aldehyde so i'm gonna say this is methanol and there you go that's your name of the molecule now as you can see this is that example in which with this uh, carbonyl carbon you have a hydrogen attached and not a carbon remember how i said that there can be anything over here it can be a carbon it can be an r group whatever so over here in this case a, there was a hydrogen attached and we call this thing right over here as methanol so this also tells you that the smallest possible aldehyde is a methanol whereas in the case of our ketones the smallest possible ketone was propanone okay um let's go on and let's talk about the second example so in this case i have two um carbons involved and so this is going to be eth and then i see that i have this c double o h bond which is an aldehyde group and so i know this is going to end with anal so it is ethanol uh, and then let's move on to our third example in this case i have one two three four five carbons and so this is going to be pent and then i see i have a c double o and h group involved so this is going to be pentanol once again let's go on and let's talk about our fourth example in this case i can see that i have one two three four and five carbons involved so this is once again pent i once again see a c double o h group involved and so this is going to be i know this is a you know it's an aldehyde so i'm going to end it with anal one important thing and that is that there's a cl attached over here as well so it's now important to number this chain in order to mention the position of this chlorine now, in this case, just like in the case of uh, carboxylic acids, if you note, this aldehyde group is always a terminal group. Let me kind of mention that here as well, that this is always, always a terminal group, all right? This aldehyde is always going to be a terminal group. It's always going to be at the end. And this is the reason why whenever you number the chain, this carbon which is involved or which is the carbonyl carbon which is involved in this functional group this is always going to be given number one and that's what you're going to see over here so this carbon gets number one this gets two three four and five and as a result i can call this as two chloro pentanol right it is located on the second carbon now let's do example number five in this case i have one two three four five carbons involved but we can clearly see that the longest carbon chain is 
this right over here and so this thing here has four carbons and so i'm gonna call this as but now i can see that it has a c double o age group which means it's an aldehyde so i'm gonna call this as butanal but let's not forget that we have an alkyl group over here as well which is right about here all right this has actually become the same color let me reduce the intensity all right so this thing right over here is our um, methyl group all right and so we have to number the chain in order to you know uh, tell its location in the name so it's going to be one two three four so we can see it is located on the third carbon so i'm going to call this as three methyl butanal now this is more or less uh, the basics of the naming of aldehydes i hope it's clear uh, the last two examples that, that i'm about to do they are slightly more complicated and um, and they're not like exactly complicated, but they are, I would say, uh, slightly different. And the reason why I'm mentioning it over here is because I've put a star there. This is something that doesn't usually show up in the exam, but I'm still going over it just for the sake of it. So that, you know, in case it does show up, you are not like, you are not in the exam, you have to know what exactly we have to do. So that's the only reason why I'm going over them. You are not really expected to know them but yeah so in this case uh, you can see you have a cyclical structure so let's see how many carbons are there in the cyclical structure three four five and six so that tells me that um this is going to be uh cyclohexane so let me write hexane and this is a cyclohexane now concerning myself with this uh this group over here which you can see is a c double o age group which is an aldehyde group i have to mention that now uh, unfortunately you can't simply write uh, cyclohexane aldehyde although i would have loved them to actually keep it as simple but uh, there's a, just a slight change that you have to uh, keep in mind when you are talking about cyclical structures so when you're mentioning cyclical structures, there's a slight difference in the naming. So instead of saying cyclohexane aldehyde, you have to say cyclohexane carb aldehyde and that's it. So you just need to include this carb part and that's all you have to do. Let me actually bring it closer. So you have to name it as cyclohexane carb aldehyde. So add a carb before the aldehyde and that's it the naming otherwise is still the same uh, that you would be expecting so it's cyclohexane carb aldehyde so whenever you have cyclical structures you add this interesting part carb okay and so that's the name for number six let's move on to the last example this thing is similar to the one we did for our uh, ketone as well if you look closely you'll notice that it is a dialdehyde all right and so let's uh, like quickly go over it so uh, you can see you have a C double O C double O age group over here, and then you also have a C double O age group over here. So that's for sure that this is a dialdehyde. Uh, Let's like first uh, get the number of carbons involved: one, two, three, four. And so this tells me that this is going to be but. Uh, let me remove that in. Okay, so uh, you have a but now very similar to how we did it in the case of ketones. The whenever you are you have this uh, dialdehyde involved, dialdehyde. All right. Whenever you have a dialdehyde, the way that the naming changes is that you name the alkane part fully. Okay. And once you're done doing that, you add dial, trial, and stuff like that in order to indicate how many aldehyde groups are involved. So in this case, um, now also one more thing, you don't need, uh, this is important to note, you don't need numbering, all right? Do not need numbering. Why? Because the aldehyde group, remember, is a terminal group. We know that when we, even when we have a dial, all right, one more thing um you can only have a trial when there's a you know there's some sort of branching let me come back to that but that is you know things kind of like hit my head in the middle of the lecture and then i'm then i really want to like tell you guys about it and so i i, I may end up making the lecture a bit more slightly advanced but yeah please please take it down all right so you do not need numbering because the carb uh, the aldehyde group is located at the very end it's a terminal group just like carboxylic acid so when you say diol it's kind of understood that it is going to be located at these terminal positions so if if someone comes up to me and tells me um all right let me first name this fully and then uh, come back to this so 
the dialdehyde you name the alkane part fully so i'm going to write this as butane and then you add the diol trial depending on how many aldehyde groups are involved so it is going to be diol because there are two uh c c h o groups involved so it's going to be uh, named as butane diol um now now yeah now now coming to the part that the aldehyde is the terminal group now if someone comes up to me and tells me well do you know how um you know let's say uh octane dye looks like right you don't need to tell me the position of the aldehyde group because it's understood that octane diol will look something like this you have one two three four five six seven and eight carbons right over here okay um and this carbon uh let me actually first make them one two three four five six seven eight carbons okay and so this carbon will be involved in the c double o h and this carbon will be involved in c double o h now see how i already know how octane diol will look like uh, sorry diol will look like i don't need to be told where this aldehyde group will be because i know it's always going to come at the end now coming to the case where you can have a trial all right and you if you want you can like end the video right over here this next portion is just for some clarification in the case of trial now let's say someone tells me uh it, it will definitely require a bit more uh um uh you know branching and stuff but let's say if you have a molecule like this let me draw it out so i have one two three four all right and let me make a c double o h over here and let me make a c double o h over here um now in this case if you see you have one two three four carbons this is again butane diol but if i branch this out if i let's say make a branch right over here and i make this all right now i have actually it's it's basically like i've uh, uh, added a branch to this carbon i've uh, in, i've replaced its hydrogen with another uh, aldehyde group now in this case this is a trial right but it's not uh, you know i i won't exactly name it as as a trial now i would have to like put in the numbering there and stuff like that but this thing right over here you won't be tested on so you can forget about this um my main uh you know my main uh objective of these lessons is to give you as many dimensions as i can uh, or as many perspectives as i can to this uh, organic chemistry so that when you sit in the exam you are like one step ahead of what 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 is expected from you you're like one step ahead from the understanding of the examiner um so th that's the only reason why i go over extra stuff if it complicates things for you if, if you think you cannot like comprehend these things very well you can always skip them around i'll try to add these stars wherever i can to indicate to you that these things are optional you don't really need to go over them well regardless of that i hope that you enjoyed the lesson if you did then give it a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel and like hit the bell icon and i'll see you next time with another lesson and this time not with uh, nomenclature so yeah and yeah um all right then